Welcome to Global One Media Stocks to Watch. I'm Michael Suado. Today, we turn our focus to a critical metals project in Canada's far north. It's in an area in the Arctic called Ferguson Lake, and the metals there could help power the clean energy revolution. Joining us to take a deeper dive into the Ferguson Lake project are Sophie Caesar and Carl Philippe Folkeson. Sophie is the head of corporate development at Canadian North Resources. They're the company that owns the Ferguson Lake project, and Carl Philippe is one of their top geologists. Sophie and Carl Philippe, welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi, Michael. All right, let's get to it. CNRI has recently published a new estimate of the mineral resources to be found in the ground near Ferguson Lake. There's copper, nickel, cobalt, palladium, and platinum, all of which are essential for high-tech industry. We'll take a closer look at the details in a moment. But first, Carl, I'd like to get an overview from you. What's your biggest takeaway from this new report? Absolutely. So thanks for having us on the show, Michael. And uh, for uh, the, the new report, our biggest takeaway is uh, this, this strong increase in new mineral resource estimate that we have released. We have increased uh, the resource estimate in the indicated category by over 172% uh, from uh, the old technical report. We have now 66.1 million tons uh, of indicated mineral resource. We have lots in the ground. We have lots of... Uh, potential still open, uh, both in the open pit category and at depth in underground, uh, which contains most of the inferred category uh, mineral resource. So we still have lots to go and we're looking forward to more exploration. All right, so you mentioned two terms there, indicated and inferred. And you know, when mining companies put these reports together, those are the two columns we zoom in on. Uh, indicated means you have greater confidence in the numbers and it's more likely the metals can be extracted, whereas inferred means it might be more difficult to monetize, or perhaps the data is not so good. So when a report comes out, we wanna see those numbers moving from the inferred column into the indicated one. And from what I'm hearing from you, what I'm hearing from you, that's what's happening here. Is that correct? Absolutely. And uh, the, main, the main takeaway is that the, uh, in the older report, we had more inferred resource, and now we have transferred most of that inferred resource into indicated re indicated mineral resources with all the drilling that we did in the past couple of years. This has been very helpful for us and a main takeaway for this, uh, this mineral report. So there are a lot of minerals present in the property. Where do you see the greatest value? Well, the greatest value for us is really the main deposit in the West Zone area. We believe that it's the, uh, it's the largest um, underdeveloped nickel copper PGE project in North America. And it contains the vast majority of, of our resources, both in the open pit category and the uh, uh, underground category. Um, as well, we're trying to get more exploration done in that area as well to grow this resource even further. All right, so just to dive into that a bit more, uh, in terms of tonnage, uh, copper and nickel are the most prevalent metals at Ferguson Lake. But if I understand correctly, platinum and palladium are likely to be the biggest economic drivers since they're a lot more expensive. Is that correct? This is uh, slightly correct. We have changed uh, the uh, mindset over at CNRI where all the minerals in our in our um, resource estimate are critical and they all are uh, economically economic grade. Um, we don't have a preference for uh, any more any minerals more coming than the other. We truly believe that they're all uh, extremely valuable and, and very important. I think that that's one of the best aspects about this project, especially for investors, is, you know, you're you're hedging these metal prices because we are polymetallic. So, we, you know, we can adapt whether copper goes up and the PGMs go down or vice versa. It, it allows it to be more economical. OK, got it. I want to follow up and ask you the, the report recommends spending 46 million Canadian dollars for further exploration and testing including the environmental baseline studies. Can you give us some insight into how these funds would be spent uh, and over what period of time? Yes, so I think it's important to point out, and I invite anybody who's curious about how that breakdown looks, it's in the first couple of pages of the, um, the resource estimate that's available on our website. Um, but what it looks like is this $46 million isn't to be spent in the next 12 months. So the proposed budget is for the next three years to take the project to completion of a pre-feasibility study. Now, what that includes is about 30,000 meter meters of definition and expansion drilling to take the project past that 100 million tons that you know we have been targeting and that we're practically there. 
So expanding that resource supports, you know, CNRI's goal of project scale and potential output. And the budget also includes um, other aspects of advanced feasibility work. So it includes infrastructure and access development um, and studies. It includes bulk sampling, some pilot metallurgical testing. And, you know, as we mentioned, so this testing, it aims to optimize the metal metal recovery rate. So I think that that's something that was key in this report was that we are looking at reducing the cost and finding the most cost effective processing methods considering our location to really maximize the profit uh, the project's profitability profitability. Okay, so one question I also wanted to clarify is does CNRI currently have this capital to fund these steps or is it going to be fundraising to do it? Uh, so we do not at this time, but we are, you know, we're sitting on a healthy cash position of, you know, just under $5 million. But again, as I mentioned, this is something that would be long term. So, you know, we are looking at how that would look, what time of financing that would look like. You know, we're discussing uh, strategic partnership potentials. So, you know, the, we we have some time before we we have to spend $46 million. Got it. Carl, uh, another thing that caught my eye in this report is that essentially you've only studied one part of Ferguson Lake, and there could be significant potential and value in other parts of the property as well. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, sure. So for uh, the main deposit, we have multiple zones that are in the indicated and the inferred category resource. We have the uh, west zone and the central zone in, for the main area, and the east zone as well is uh, considered part of the uh, resource estimate. We uh, also have multiple different um, satellite zones that we have targeted for exploration needs and further development of this uh, of the deposit. We have the, for example, the M zone um, and the Anomaly 51 zone, which are both uh, both drilled targets, and we have good results out of them as well. So we're trying to. These are for blue sky exploration. We have lots of potential here. And uh, it's not only the deposit, but they have, we have lots more to do at Ferguson Lake. So how do you decide where to focus your efforts? So for the moment, our most our efforts are going to be to uh, expand the main uh, main area, the main areas, so both the east zone and the uh, main west zone to get that uh, 100 million tons. And uh, we're going to try and make that happen as soon as possible. Okay. Now, Sophie, the report discusses two ways to process metals. The first relies on water and gravity. It's a what's well, called a flotation gravity flow sheet. And the second is hydrometallurgy, which is a chemical process. Flotation gravity might be less expensive. Hydrometallurgy has higher recovery rates. So how do you choose which route to take, or is it some combination of the two? So our goal is really to optimize both cost and efficiency um, by carefully evaluating the trade-off between those two different processing methods. So the flotation gravity flow sheet, it's advantageous due to its lower initial capital cost and operating costs, which can be particularly beneficial considering our location. So we need to explore it further with you know, potential uh, pilot testing, um, which we did mention in the budget that we, we've allo um, allocated for, and then to uh, refine the processing strategy and ensure the optimal balance between cost and efficiency is achieved. All right, excellent. Let's check in on the investment side of the equation now. Uh, Sophie, when you look at the numbers in the latest report, what is the message you think investors should draw from it? That's a great question. Um, I think, you know, one of the things that we've just been talking about is that we are looking at making this the most cost efficient project possible while keeping in uh, taking into account ESG. So we're working on that. We're also working on expanding that resource. So taking that, which we did, that inferred to indicated and putting 80% of that in open pit, which is you know more cost efficient as well. So those I think would be the two large takeaways. And then the, the last one for investors to really consider is the you know, when you're looking at that budget, when you're looking at the plan work for the next three years, it's creating value moving to an economic bankable study for the project. CNRI shares have taken a hit so far this year. They're down about 45 to 50% since January. 
CNRI still has a significant market cap, though, of more than 125 million Canadian dollars. And as investors take a closer look at the metals located on the Ferguson Lake property, pretty much all of which are in high demand, they may find that the stock presents a value at the current level. Sophie and Carl Philippe, thank you both so much for joining me today. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks so much. We've been speaking with Sophie Caesar and Carl Philippe Fulkerson of Canadian North Resources, and you've been watching Global One Media's Stocks to Watch. I'm Michael Swadell.